Last episode, we kicked some butts, finished up the mission, and now we're heading back to our main base of operations, the Mobile Avenger. Let's meet the crew. Also, can I go on record for saying that the speaker actually looks like iDubs? I wanna be gay! Okay, we got some corpses from that mission. These corpses can be either sold on the black market or used to upgrade research. Commander to the research lab. Speaking of research, let's go ahead and talk to Mr. Tygen. Impressive, isn't it? Capable of generating immense power, yet completely harmless to human life. If only the same could be said for the rest of the aliens' technology, Commander. Dr. Richard Tigan, Chief Science Officer. I am responsible for the entirety of our research here, as well as the procedure you so recently underwent. Welcome to my lab, such as it is. I'm not sure what Central may have told you, but we found something while removing you from the alien stasis suit. A device implanted directly in your occipital lobe. Had I access to the equipment available to me during my tenure at Advent, I would already know the precise nature of its function. However, given time and your approval, of course, Commander, I assure you, I will find out. Which brings to light an additional point. Though aspects of this facility are indeed impressive, I am but one man. Were you to direct additional support personnel and resources to me, I could substantially improve the speed of all our research. A farewell, Commander. Alright, so this is Dr. Richard Tigan. Richard's actually the first name of my dad's name. Um, we're going to be able to check out different research trees here that'll give us different buffs and also advance the story. So we can upgrade our weapons to modular weapons, so like adding on different things, scopes, clip sizes, stuff like that, hybrid materials, and alien biotech. I think we're going to go for the high, or modular weapons first, either that or materials. It doesn't I particularly do matter, I suppose. Area of research to be among the more intriguing options available. We'll begin work immediately. I'll send word when a complete report is available. I'm also fairly disgusting myself because I said clip sizes, and that's a big pet pee for me. Okay. Reworked your repulsors with some of the parts I salvaged from their old engine. Should fix that stabilization problem you had. Come on, Rover. It'll work. Commander! Getting our tech to talk to theirs is harder than you'd think. Lily Shen, Chief Engineer, at your service. You were probably expecting to see my father. In all that's happened, I'm guessing Central didn't tell you yet. He's gone. Dad gave everything he had to get us this far. This entire ship is his life's work. I know he would have loved to show you around the place himself. He used to talk about you a lot. You can be sure I'm ready to finish what he started. Might not look it, but in here, I can fabricate pretty much anything you come up with. And with a little more help, well, you'd be amazed with what I can do. It was an honor to finally meet you, Commander. All right, so Dr. Lily Shin here is able to help us produce different things. things can make in combat, Commander. With a few supplies, I can manufacture anything we need in no time. So we have There's different facilities here that we can build. Come on. Avenger, Commander, but we'll need more engineers to clear out space for construction first. We can't actually open up anything yet because we don't have any engineers. So that's something that we can either buy, we can buy engineers, or we can rescue them through different missions. But I'm going to go ahead and do myself as a favor and build up a guerrilla tech school. So we'll start work on the new facility right away, Commander. Commander, good to see you on your feet again. Welcome to the bridge, the nerve center of our operation. The aliens have our entire world in their grip. Advent controls everything. Government, communications, industry, not to mention the military. And it's on us to take it all back. Resources and time are tight, Commander. 
It'll be up to you to decide how to best use both. The ship is yours. The ship is yours. While we prepare for new operations and continue our research, we can pass time by scanning at sites like this one. On your order, we'll start our scans on the surrounding area. Commander, one of our resistance contacts just tipped us off to a site that may be worth investigating. Alright guys, so this is the main world here. And we can choose to do a few different objectives. I think we are going to go for this rookies right here. Um, but basically we'll have different objectives. We can scan and I'll pass time. And whenever we reach a new milestone, whether it's over here, one of these things, um, so like research or building facilities, or if the enemy makes progress, then we'll actually have um, a mission. We'll go have a chance to go do that. But we're going to go over here and see if we can't Avenger recruit some rookies. I'm hoping that these rookies will be some of my pre-made clone troopers. Commander, the Avengers remote scanning capabilities will help us search the area for clues or other resources. It's going to take some time, though. We've got a lot of ground to cover. These findings will likely prove crucial to our ongoing efforts, Commander. So we just spent three days scanning this area, and we finished this report here on March 4th, 2035. Um, so what we got is we were given access to the more of this tree here. We're able to research magnetic weapons, and we're also given the ability to upgrade our weapons. So, um, we're actually not going to go for magnetic weapons because it's going to take 28 days and we don't have the materials to be able to supply that either. So we're going to go for hyper materials because it's only going to take three days. I had assumed you'd make that research a priority, Commander. I'll notify you as soon as the report is available. So one more day of scanning here and we'll be able to get rookies for our team. Let's go and check this out. Okay. Um... This is actually what I'm a little upset about. All of these guys here are not clone troopers, so I'll have to change that a little bit later. But we're going to fly back. So many of the buildings in the area were still intact. We broadcasted a wide area signal in the hopes of contacting possible survivors. A small group of people cautiously emerged from an old warehouse and expressed interest in joining the resistance. Setting course for the Eastern US <laughs> Although they do have some clone trooper gear. I'll have to change it out a little bit so they look like proper clone troopers okay so we can either scan here and get some intel or we can go for some supplies it'll take six days I'm thinking we should go for that and we'll go ahead and start scanning this we'll go ahead and research hybrid materials in the meantime though a number of interesting discoveries commander so, I definitely encourage you guys to check this out, like maybe pausing the video or taking a screenshot, whatever, because there's a lot of good information here, but I'm not going to sit here and read the entire thing. I think it'd be a pretty small minority of people who would want to read this information here, but it is a good read if you would like to. So we do have a new item available, the nanoscale vest, and we can also research plated armor, which I'm all about getting my troopers better armor. And that'll take 30 days, wow. So now we'll go for Alien Biotech, which is the chip that was embedded into our skulls. See that work begins immediately, Commander. Let's I'll go back to the bridge. When I have a full report available. So five more days on this. We're probably going to actually Commander, research this first. The resistance continues to grow. We'll have a better chance of finding openings to strike back at Advent. As it is, we've already identified a potential target to disrupt the aliens' operations in this region. Our window of opportunity is limited, so we'll have to move fast. Let's go and review our target here. Okay, so we can actually get a in, er, an engineer as a reward for completing this mission. Operation Blind Giant. And our objective is to defect, de, blah, 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 protect the device. There we go, I can speak English. Let's go and confirm this mission. I think it'll be very worth it to get an engineer to start clearing out some of the alien hull space inside this big ship. Okay, now I actually do not want to promote these guys. Um, I kind of want to remove them and bring in two other fresh soldiers into the fight. 
we'll go ahead and set up their weapons to be Star Wars weapons. Now, for this class, the Ranger class, we can give them a rifle, a carbine, or a shotgun. The advantage to a rifle is that they have a good range bonus um, anywhere from 10 to 15 tiles away. The carbine has a good range bonus from, let's say, 1 to like maybe 8 tiles away. You get an additional chance to hit your enemy. And the shotgun is in the same way, but the shotgun also has a 10% critical chance on the right hand side over there. Also, it does more damage than both of the weapons. Um, exactly one extra damage on average. So for him, we'll choose a shotgun. Just have a bit of more of a unique class. Um, I think we'll set up our specialist here to be our medic. Uh, of course, sets you up on a, a good rifle for more of a long range fire. Now Spetnaz over here is just a rookie. I think we'll set him up with a flashbang. And we'll also give him a carbine. A little bit more of a up close and personal trooper to kind of get in there, get in the fight. And over here, I think we'll also set you up in a carbine. Now we're very much so suited for close range combat, which I'm okay with. We'll have Spetnas here, sorry, um, Solus here on a longer rifle to be able to go for more of a long range capabilities. I'm thinking maybe we actually should switch you give you a, a nice rifle. Just have a more of a mixed playstyle here. So let's go ahead and begin the mission. I should also identify you in some way as the ranger. Uh, so we'll go ahead and customize props. What do I want to do here? Um, I might give you some cool arms, I think. Now I don't quite know what I want to set up this clone trooper as. Whether I want him to be the super sneaky specialist or what. I think we'll set him up on Cody Arms. That's pretty cool. Do I? Being a little indecisive here, guys, I do apologize. Uh, normally I'll do stuff like this beforehand. Actually, I kind of want you to be the Blade Master. So, let me back out and show you guys exactly what I'm talking about here. Um, soldier abilities. So, we'll see if we can... Yep. So we have the Scout and the Assault class. This class here is very good with a blade. This class on this side is very good at concealing themselves. And I want Lazy Gamer to be our concealed guy. So I think I want to set you up to be our Blade Master. So we'll set up the arms for that. Uh, what did I choose before? I think it was like... I think it was a Waxer Arms. With a nice little mark saving on the side. I think they look pretty cool. And he has a nice little green color. I think we'll set it to something pretty similar. Maybe more of a matte color than that. That looks pretty sick. Alright, so we are good to go. I can now identify him in combat a little bit better because of the green shoulder pads. We also have these guys over here. Um, we should probably set you up... No, I mean, you'll be pretty obvious because of the specials. Alright, let's go and begin the mission, and let's start wrecking face. Alright, so here's hoping for another flawless victory. Alright, we're dropping our soldiers down into the nice little suburban neighborhood with a bunch of trash cans and tires piled up everywhere. <laughs> Very Canadian. We need to lock down the area and secure the device at all costs. Alright, so we are not on a timer. Good, good, good. So usually there's a timer to this sort of thing that kind of cucks a little bit, but this mission we don't have to worry about that. Not at all. We're going to move our troopers over here on the right hand side. I think I don't want to... I do not want to stay near this building. What's that sound? Also, apparently we can shoot at something. This little tank there. That can be useful in some situations, but not in this one. So there are some people inside this building. This little chick here is like floating inside the floor. Um, so is that person. <laughs> Ugh. Um, if they get spooked, they might alert the enemy to us. And I don't like the idea of that. So we're going to give them a wide berth. Again, we're seen as <laughs> pretty much terrorists. Right? Okay, that little sound was just at peril over there. We're going to move our guys over a little bit more in this direction. Nice little pink flamingo here in front of the fire hydrant. Ooh. 
Ooh. They are stronger than ever, with an even greater psionic potential. Our gremlins can attempt to access the Advent Network from here. We might be able to hack their system to get an advantage. Reposition a little bit. But be careful. If they detect us, things will only get worse. Alright, so this is an interesting discovery. If these guys are on patrol, this is pretty useless. But, if they're not, we can actually shoot that propane tank and create a pretty big boom there. Now, I quite like the idea of that, however, I don't want to bank on it. If they move in this direction towards us, we might be in a fight this next turn. So let's go ahead and reposition our troops to prepare for that. So we'll set up our two long range guys over there in the back, and then our two short range over here in the front. Yep, yeah, okay, so they are on patrol. Ooh! We had an enemy actually hit this little beacon over here, the thing we're supposed to be protecting. Now, we saw the enemy troops go in this direction, but we didn't see where they went. So this is going to be a bit tricky. Um, in the next two or three turns, we're going to be engaging the enemy. For that, I know. But we need to be able... Ew. Excuse me, guys. We need to be able to do so in a way that will help protect our troopers and make sure we don't lose anybody. That's really what I can that's what I care about right now. Now, just out of curiosity, let's just see what we can do by hacking this. We can back out of this. This is definitely not committing to anything. But if there's a pretty cool bonus and there's not a whole lot of repercussions, we might want to go for this. Okay, so there is a feedback effect. Um Okay, so this will alert the enemies to our position. Now, this really isn't worth it. This is a 40% chance to unlock. That's really bad. We'd want at least a 70% chance to want to go for something like that. And as our specialists level up, they will grant themselves better uh, chances to go for things like that. Okay, we're going to move Spetnaz up here to this rock wall. And let's go ahead and put him on Overwatch, just in case he can... Spot enemy, any, ew, any enemies over that little brick open wall there. That'd be pretty good. Now we got these two soldiers here. We're going to want to move one up to where my ranger is right now. Captain Derpy, let's find a good place for you. Good defensible position. I'm thinking this is the best place, but I honestly would want him under Overwatch if possible. Because we don't know where those aliens are, right? They're a little bit of a mystery to us right now. Eventually, we'll want to set up some troops on this roof here, but it's a little too dangerous at the moment. Okay, let's look at our game plan here. Man, I, I kind of want to run through the center of this building, but because we know those soldiers are over here, that's going to be pretty risky. We wouldn't want to get flanked by any means. So I kind of want to go around, around the building. Um... This is a bit risky, guys. So let's go ahead and put Creaky right here. And let's go ahead and put him on Overwatch. Captain Derpy, you're going to go up to this tree. It's going to be just out of sight of our allies. And hopefully, we don't see the enemies. We do see them. Okay. So we know exactly where those aliens are now. You can move up Foxy up here and set you up on Overwatch. So we have three troopers on Overwatch. This thing is still under fire. We do have some time though. I'm not going to rush over there and put our soldiers in danger just to get to that point a little bit faster. It's not worth it. Okay, decisions, decisions. We have quite a lot of distance to cover now. Not really a, a good way to do it. Okay, so we want to take out the sectoid over here and also the advent trooper. We need to do so in a way that will keep our guys in cover and prevent us from being out of position over here. We actually see two more troopers over here. 
So an officer, it seems like, and then a regular advent trooper. You can see he has a rounded helmet, and you can see this one's a more of a bulky, kind of a, a sharper texture to it. So we know we have at least five enemies in play. Alright, I'm thinking Spetnaz can come over here, maybe in one of these positions. And again, I'm taking this really slow, but it is important to make sure we have the best possible chance for victory. And I also don't want to lose any of our clone troopers by any means. Now, we can move. Hmm. I'm just looking at our options here, guys, that's all. I'm thinking we can move Foxy up here and get that nice overwatch position here. Kind of climbing up the little gutter. Um, we need to move these guys up too. We can move you to at least right there. Again, we want to keep the high cover. This would be nice, but we'll actually be spotted if we go to that position right now. So I'm thinking you're going to have to sit tight. At least for the moment. You do have a line of sight, but this is a pretty bad distance here. Now, what kind of weapon range is this? Let's look at the top blockers for this. It's so like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So, it wasn't a perfect count, but like ten to eleven, you start to drop off the shotgun sort of weapon range. So that's good for me to remember. And um, I think, yeah, we'll just keep on Overwatch. I would really like to move him up, but it can't really do that and also remain in line of sight. Um, I guess I can move him up like behind this like caution cone. I don't really like the, this position though. I don't like to keep these guys in half cover. Okay, the aliens are still on the move. They're moving back over in this direction, which is actually pretty bad for us. Now, you might ask, why is this bad for us? Well, we don't have a good line of sight on them anymore. So we'll have to rely on probably a grenade to take them out. Okay. So that's pretty good. We have a 69% chance to hit that psychoid there. We have good chances to hit both of them. Who is this? Okay. So we do have a pretty good weapons range here with this trooper as well. Here are my thoughts. We can open up this door here. That'll give us a little bit more of a line of sight with these doors. If we ever need that. And then we can go and break cover. And start firing on them. Now who is the most vulnerable here? I would imagine it would be the guy on top. So next turn we can use an aid protocol. And use that to help protect him. So we'll go ahead and open the door up. Now, I actually don't know if that's going to cause them to become aggro or not. Um, let's actually wait for the door next turn. Take aim. Take him out. Mm, God. Okay, my thoughts. Let me articulate exactly what I'm thinking, because I'm a little bit bad about that. I want to chunk this grenade over here and hit both of them. I'll take out the Advent Soldier instantly and do damage to the Sectoid. But if they run, if the Sectoid runs this way and outside of these two guys' line of sight, then they won't be able to attack. But if the garage door is open, they'll most likely be within line of sight because of the door and because of this window. So that's my thoughts. So I'm thinking it'll be worth it just to go ahead and pop the door open. Okay, they didn't notice. Good. So we'll put you on Overwatch, and then we'll have you chunk a grenade down. Big fan of these grenades, by the way, if you haven't noticed. Nice. We instantly took out the Advent Soldier there. And now the Sectoid has a good bit of damage already done to them. Now, that does mean all of our troopers are now revealed. Okay, we shot him through the window. Six damage! Wow! That was really good. Okay. 
So we'll go ahead and have you reload the shotgun there. I won't be able to reload Nazi with this, but I do want to keep that shotgun full. So, alright, so our line of sight here, we don't want to move much more without keeping guys on Overwatch. So we have one guy on Overwatch. Let's move up to this position right here. This will be a pretty good place to stay on Overwatch. Excellent. Okay. So we did not actually alert the other aliens over here inside this house yet. We were pretty close. I think if you remember correctly, they were right here before. So we're right on the cusp of seeing them. We have one guy on Overwatch. Two guys on Overwatch, in fact. We'll move you up right here. This is in front of Foxy, if I remember correctly. This guy's cover. Seems that the building's on fire. Also this, yep, there's the two aliens there. The radio beacon is also still taking damage. So Cat and Derpy here, not Foxy, it was Cat and Derpy. Really should have remembered his name. Um, we'll keep you on Overwatch. Let's bring Foxy up one more step. Put him on Overwatch. So what's going to happen here is as soon as these guys cross this line, this little arbitrary line, they're going to be attacked. And these guys, obviously, I mean the enemy. So now we can try to bait them towards us a little bit. So we need to find some high cover to put our guys behind. I'm thinking this is a good position right here. Now, we want Spetnaz to be taking point. We want him to be the one in the front because he does have... Oh no, we want Derpy to be in front, because he does have the ranger ability to go hack and slash. So, I'm thinking maybe something like this. We'll keep Spetnaz right here. It's a bit far away from him, but it won't be that bad. And then we'll go ahead and put Captain Derpy up here behind this tall rock. Which, why there would be a giant rock like that in the middle of a neighborhood is beyond me, but none of my business, is it? Alright, so we took... 3 damage on this guy here, the Advent Officer is already at half HP, and as soon as he jumps out that window, slash goes through the door, we start firing on him. Okay, well, 30% chance. It's not that bad. Oh, we found two more soldiers up in here, but they haven't discovered us yet. So you guys might be wondering why we're missing so much in Overwatch, and that is because there is a 0.7 multiplier to all of the hit percentages whenever you're using Overwatch. So for example, if this guy were to move out of cover with Creaky here, Creaky would have a, what is that, 90% um, chance to hit normally, let's say if he was just like standing out in the open. Now with Overwatch, there is a 0.7 multiplier if you're taking one action turn, and if you're taking two action turns of move, which is considered a dash, it's a .6 multiplier. So like you're moving really, really fast, you're kind of sprinting over and stuff. So let's just say that this guy was trying to move to a position that was within one action point, so like inside the little blue area. And I guess I can also help describe this a bit more. So if you're moving inside this, it's a .7 multiplier. If you're moving inside this yellow line, it's a .6. So, uh, let me actually go back to you, Creaky. So with this, 90% times 0.7, what is that? 63% um, um, chance to hit. So in this case, it's actually better for me to go ahead and fire instead of relying on the hit chance. So if this guy, if this soldier was to ever move, I would have a 63% chance to hit the guy. Um, whereas for you, this is actually really good. Um, so what would this be, like 99? Yeah, that'd be 99% chance to hit if he was just out in the open, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, so let's just say 100 times 0.7, that'd be 70% chance to hit, and it's also more advantageous for me to try to fire the weapon now at him. Now, why is that important? Well... It's important to know that type of thing because let's say you only have a 40% chance to hit the guy normally. You can put him in Overwatch, like this guy for example. Mm, let's choose this. 
Like, this is not worth it for me to try to go and fire this weapon. 25% chance, I'm not going to hit him. Let's just be real with it, okay? But I can put him in Overwatch and move my other guys around to pressure him to move, and then as soon as he does move, that 65% chance to hit becomes something like, I think it's 42%. Let me do the math on that. Um, 42 plus freaking, yeah, just, just over 42. So let's say 40... 44% or something like that. Uh, it's close around there. I don't want to go into it, whatever. So it's way more advantageous for me to go for Overwatch with this guy in that situation. Now, let's see if I can chunk the frag grenade over here. I can't quite hit both of them. Sorry, not frag. Flashbang. I knew what I was thinking, but I didn't quite articulate it. Now, we could move Cat and Derpy over here on the right-hand side and flank both of these guys here. But if we keep moving forward, we might actually reveal the two soldiers we know are back here. So metagaming a little bit, I actually don't want to do that. We can't quite hit any of the cover in front of them either. So what is the best course of action? I'm going to switch also to Foxy up here. Okay, so Foxy can only hit this Advent Trooper, so we want him to go for that. We'll have him reload because he's missing one shot. Also, the carbines have one additional magazine slot, so they can fire a fourth time instead of worrying about the third. So we had him reload, and now he's going to fire at the other trooper. 80% chance to hit. Pretty easy, right? Now, the other three guys here have a pretty limited chance to hit this guy. This guy we know we're going to want on Overwatch. But is this the best position for him? I think it is. I guess we can technically move him up to like right here, open the door up. He'll be just a little bit closer. And I think I'll actually do that. Now we'll open the door. Yeah, so instead of having the 25% chance, it's a 26% because 1% weapon range. Let's actually look at this. And I'm taking this really slow, guys, but this information is very valuable for a rest of the Let's Play, so I do want to take that time. To kind of look at this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So around 14 is when the weapon bonuses come in for the carbine. Um, if I remember correctly, that's a 20% chance to hit. Or 20% extra aim chance. Yeah, around that. For the carbine. Sorry, for the long rifle. DC-15A. Okay, as we discussed earlier, we're actually going to want to chunk this flashbang over here, and we'll disorient this officer. Reason why I'm doing that is because I don't expect him to be able to hit us from here, but, well, let me take that back. I wouldn't want him to hit any of our troopers here. We want a flawless victory. I'm expecting he's going to run back. I think he's going to retreat, but I don't know that for sure. And I'll put these other two guys on there for once. So right now, he can't hit us very well. And he's going to want to run away. And we have three guys on Overwatch. Sorry, two guys on Overwatch. The bastard! Oh, I thought he was going to run away, but he actually just turned and fired. What a dick. Okay. So knowing what we know now... I think that we're going to go put aid protocol on Cat and Derpy over here. So what that does is going to give him an additional 20 bonus defense for this next turn. And everyone else I'm going to set up on Overwatch. Except for Derpy, of course. Overwatch. Uh, we can actually move you up some. But we want to move you up to high cover. And I'll show you in just a second why I'm doing this. We'll move you up behind this stump. Okay, we didn't actually discover the other troopers back here that we know are back there, but they don't know we're here. And we're going to throw this grenade at this officer. We're also going to break open that um, defense here, so we might have the line of sight of the enemy now. But we're able to break open that house. Nice! So it wasn't even that big of a deal. I'm going to move this trooper over here, Spetnaz, up to this lamppost. Lamppost? <laughs> um, not a lamppost, it's a uh, freaking 
check that gear at all what is costs. it? I am going completely dead right now on what that thing is even called. Lamppost? It's not a lamppost. What is it called? I don't know. It's late at night, guys. <laughs> uh, those things are just... It's too difficult for me to remember that what those things are called. Street lamps. Street lamps, not lampposts. Okay, um... So we got Foxy all the way over here. He's not going to be able to do much from this angle, though. I guess we'll put him on Overwatch, but he's not going to be that useful, will he? It's not even like a specialist where he can use his other abilities from range, either. Like, his, his value is pretty much run up. But there's no more high cover up here, either. I, I don't like this, but I guess we'll have to move him to, like, like right here or something. So, we have those other guys. We know exactly where they are. Let's actually check out this hacking thing again. Before, the the fail effect was um, was our troopers being revealed. But since they're now revealed, is that still a thing? Can we abuse that? Yeah, we can abuse that. So, we might not be able to begin to like, successfully hack this, but if we can, that'd be pretty awesome. A field hack will result in any nearby enemy troop groups being alerted to your position. I'm okay with that. Let's see if we can make it. Oh, we did not make it. Okay, so we failed this hack, but the enemies will now see where we are on the map, which actually helps us out, because we don't have to leave our position. Um, if I had known this, I actually wouldn't have moved Foxy. So I'm going to move you to Overwatch. The same for you two. Huh. Okay, it seems that the enemy troops didn't decide to move there. What to do, what to do. Okay. Like we drilled, go! I have a plan, boys. Okay, we didn't need it, anyways. Awesome. None of our troops are actually on Overwatch. We're not going to get the advantage of these guys bolting for cover. If they had been on Overwatch, we would have been able to fire on them before anything else and get that a little bit, bit of advantage from not having to worry about missing or or uh, worry about them being in cover. So we need to set our guys up in high cover over here. I think we're going to move Spetnaz inside this building here. Move, move Moving him like inside this little wall area. and We'll have a pretty good line of sight of this stuff. And I do want to hit this propane tank because I think it'll make a pretty big boom and do a lot for our team. We're going to move you up here to this street lamp, not a lamppost. Put you on Overwatch. Now, we do have Foxy over here, which is in a kind of a bad position. We also have our trooper right here that's next to this little spot. I'm not a big fan of that. We're going to go put Aid Protocol on Foxy to give him a plus 20 defense. So this is as if he is in high cover. So they're not going to go for this guy, hopefully. Um, he's a bit delicate here. Oh, we can still move him a little bit. It's not bad at all. So let's look at this. So we would have a, what is that, 70, 76% chance to hit, times 0 0.7, so 7 times 7 is 49. So we have just above a 50% chance to hit him in Overwatch if this sector is to move. But if we were to fire the weapon at him, we would only have a 36% chance to hit. So this is absolutely worth it to go for Overwatch, and that's why that math is important to know, because we'll get a pretty big advantage to hit him in that scenario. So we only have two more troopers' moves to go for. They only have one action apiece. What I'm looking for is which is better to attack, which is better to put on Overwatch, and which is better to go for the propane tank, which we can't actually miss. I'm thinking it's best to put Spetnaz and try to attack the propane tank, if it blows up this cover, then that means Foxy will have a pretty good line of sight of the Sectoid and might be able to take him out this turn, which is of course what we want. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go ahead and fire on this propane tank with Spetnaz. Nice! That did a lot of damage, guys. That went really big. Um, oh, I thought the 5 damage was against the Sectoid, but it was not. But that's okay. That's just fine. So looking at this, that'd be a... 85, 87% chance to hit, 
Um, 8 times 7 is freaking 56 and a little bit of change. So it's better for us to go on Overwatch here. So if, if this guy decides to move, then we'll have a good chance to hit. Now this is the negative to that plan. As if he doesn't move, it would have been better for me to actually fire on him. No respite for the dead. The aliens have found a way to mind control them now. Okay. So that sectoid did actually bring in a little thrall here. Which I won't be able to take out the sectoid this turn, I don't think. So we will need to take that thing out. If we were to kill the sectoid, however, that does give us the benefit of not having to worry about the thrall because it will eventually collapse. Now, I'm thinking we should bring up Creaky up here. He does have the long DC-15 rifle. I'm thinking this is a good position to be able to flank our sectoid friend over here. And what about Foxy? Foxy could also do that. Do we want to, though? Thinking... What am I thinking? Well, we could definitely take out the soul right now. But we're not going to have a shot on the sectoid. At all. Ooh, 47% chance. That's not that bad. I think we should go for this shot. Just under 50%. So, that kind of settles it. I think we're going to move Creaky up here to this high cover. So he have a nice line of sight of this enemy. We'll have Foxy go for the, the shot here on the sectoid. You never know, he might get a critical critical shot on them. 3% <laughs> chance to get a critical hit. Ooh, got him! So, negative 3 damage on this guy, I guess plus 3 damage on him. And then we have this Thrall to contend with. We'll probably need both of our guys to deal with them. Or, just one of them. Okay. So here's my thoughts. If I were to move this ranger up, if I move him up one space over here, where freaking Spetnazes is right now, next turn I could use my slash ability up against a sectoid. I can't actually do it. I'm one space away right here. So I can move him up to right here and then fire on the thrall. So with that information, I can move Spetnaz over here just past the thrall and send him up on the overwatch. Now I'm not going to do it quite yet, just in case Spitnaz does miss. Sorry, Captain Derpy does miss. His names, guys. I'm sorry. Right here. Yeah. So, 100% chance to hit. Hopefully we get this. <laughs> oh! Oh, that didn't kill him. Okay. So, for that reason, I'm glad now that I didn't actually put... Captain Spetnaz on Overwatch. 81% chance to hit him. Hopefully we get this. There we go. So now that Advent Officer has died twice. Get freaking wrecked. And we have decent cover of this guy over here now. You can see this shield over here. This is our flanking meter. Now no one's actually on Overwatch, so he's going to have pretty full reign of to do whatever he wants. Okay, so he used one of his psionic abilities to panic one of my soldiers. So this guy's freaking out now. And it's, oh! <laughs> he actually fired back in his panic frenzy. Now most times they are pretty bad about not hitting the enemy during that, you know, panicking or whatever. But he actually did a pretty good job. He was able to hit the sectoid. Wasn't quite able to kill him. And we'll put you on Overwatch, just in case. Same with you, Spetnass. And for you, Captain Derpy, we're going to use you to go and hack and slash this guy. We're going to go on the other side of the sofa and try to take him out. We missed! How do we miss? Oh, he's right there! 88% chance and a missed. <laughs> he didn't miss, though. Nice. And we're actually inside the area to pick up the loot, too, which is pretty cool. Are down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. Mission accomplished. Let's go and pick up the Iridium Iridium core? I think that's how I pronounce it. And the advanced scope. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. 
Um, okay, nice. So, we did take a pretty good big amount of time with the turns taken, but that was a flawless victory, guys. Seven enemies killed. We got the... Excuse me. All these monster burps I'm having right now. It's awful. So, we didn't have any soldiers wounded or killed, and we got a flawless victory. That is something to celebrate over. We also broke some records. Average cover bonus, 33.33%. And <laughs> average enemies killed per turn, 0.5. Which is actually kind of low. But that's okay, that'll eventually go up when we do better, bigger and better things. So, Foxy was definitely our MVP this game. Most dealt damage, most made attacks, and most under fire was Foxy. Uh, if you remember correctly, Foxy is the... Um, specialist, right? I can't remember. I think he's a specialist. And then move the furthest. The furthest was our squatty cat and derpy. Good work out there, Commander. The aliens must be getting nervous by now. <laughs> you got that right. So we actually. <laughs> Solicitor actually has zero kills. That's a little sad. But we have two soldiers to promote, so let's go ahead and do so. Serving as our demolitions experts, the Grenadiers provide heavy ordnance delivery whenever and wherever we need it. Heck yeah. So, this Grenader will, will not be able to launch grenades. He also has an additional grenade slot, which is pretty cool. So I'm most likely going to outfit him with the freaking um, flash grenade. Flash bang. And that'll be pretty good for him. He can launch pretty far away, and it just helps out the team to have someone else with an extra grenade. And then finally we'll have Foxy over here. Just like it sounds, our sharpshooters engage enemy targets with pinpoint accuracy from extreme range. They're also trained in pistol marksmanship for the occasional close encounter. So these sharpshooters are invaluable to our team, at least in my play style, because I like to go kind of slow, take things nice and steady, and I like to keep my soldiers alive, and this will help me do that. Squad Sight. You can now target enemies within squad mate's sight, provided there's a line of sight to the target. So this guy could be a mile away, but as long as there's a allied spotter there that has line of sight of the enemy now foxy can shoot that target it's pretty good stuff we're going to continue here and hopefully outfit them with a little bit more better gear we got a iridium core here which will be able to help us out later in the game and then we also got an advanced scope increased aim by 10 percent and i know exactly who's getting that the sniper is that'll give him an additional 10 percent chance to hit which is pretty freaking awesome. Hello, Commander. The council you once knew is no more. Its membership have all sworn loyalty to the Advent Administration. With one exception. It is good to see you again. In the day since your capture, I have done all I can to aid the Resistance from the inside. It was these Resistance operatives that provided the intel leading to your recent extraction. As of now, Resistance forces are currently somewhat disorganized. If we are to defeat Advent and their alien masters, you must change this before it is too late. What you are seeing are classified reports of missing civilians from across the world. Their numbers are growing. We suspect they have been taken to a nearby Advent Black Site, though its exact location remains unknown. Time is short, Commander. We need you to take charge of resistance operations throughout the world. Establish contact with the local cells and bring them into the fold. Find this black site and shut it down. Save our world. The clock is ticking. Good luck, Commander. 
That guy has a pretty sick voice. I feel like if I really tried, I could try to imitate his voice. Good luck, Commander. <clears throat> I would need more of a gravelly voice, so that wasn't quite it. Good luck, Commander. I don't know. I feel like I could do it if I really tried for a good two months or so. What do you think, guys? Do you think I could do it? Do you think I could pull off the, the spokesman's voice? Pretty sick. I really am a, a fan. He really nails the voice work in this game. Really does. And it just fits perfectly. I really like it. Um, I'm a bit jealous and uh, may or may not have a man crush. What? We're making progress, Commander. I've updated our objectives based on the latest findings. You have done an outstanding job leading the Resistance, Commander. Why, thank you. Um, <laughs> so our reward for that mission was Dr. Ashley Nichols, an engineer, which will be pretty helpful for us. Um, 